Hello my chef knives enthusiasts. Today in this video I'm not going to unbox a knife or review a knife. Today we're going to sharpen or Ono is going to sharpen this really nice Negara Anmon Usuba. This knife has never been sharpened before. I have never sharpened a single bevel knife before. So that's why I wanted to come to Ono in his beautiful Karasu knife store in Amsterdam. What are we going to do with this knife, Ono? Well, it's a very good shape. It only needs edge sharpening, so that means we're going to touch up the koba. The kirea part over here. From the shogun line to the edge doesn't need any attention. I might give it a quick polish after we're done sharpening, but we're going to sharpen mainly just the secondary edge, called the Koba. And we'll show you guys how to do it. Very decent shape, so we don't have to go any lower than a thousand grit. Let's see which one I'll take. Um, yeah, nice fast stone, slightly higher than a thousand grit, I'd say. But for single bevel, really nice, especially Koba. It's a little bit harder on these stones to get a nice, even polish on them. You have to have a really, really good surface area if you want to have a clean, consistent polish. But for edge sharpening, I really like these. Koba, so secondary bevel, which is only this part, only a half a millimeter. When it was new, you could easily get three or four Koba sharpenings before you have to touch up the Korea. And Kirea sharpening is thinning, so you actually thin the knife, you remove metal from the sides and not, not the edge itself, which is a bit more difficult, but we'll talk a little bit more about that later. Stone is flat, knife is straight, very important with single bevel knives because you want to sharpen the backside later, and if it's not straight, there'll be certain areas which you won't touch. You use the backside sharpening only for burr removal, so you make a burr on the koba with every stone, every stone you want to go through, and then only on your last stone, preferably something higher than 6,000 grit, you would touch the backside, and that's just burr removal. But if you don't have a straight knife, there might be areas which don't touch the stone, and in that case, you won't remove the burr on that section, which makes your sharpening less effective, and it will dull your knife faster in the future. You're only removing the burr at the end of all progressions yep. in stones. Yep. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Totally you want to keep your burr on mostly because you don't want to sharpen the backside on a thousand stone because you want to remove the least amount of possible, like least amounts of metal on the backside and keep these lines, the Uroshi, as thin as possible. And especially this one because the concaveness of this backside is less than some other single bevels I see. If you're going to remove too much metal here, your geometry will be lost in a way. It's going to be too flat. Finding the angle, pretty easy. I always put the knife flat on the stone. Then if you press here, your kireya will touch the stone. And then you use your nail to find the edge. Now my nail will dig into the edge because the edge is not uh, straight on the stone. And then you slowly lift the spine of the knife until your nail will skid over the blade. Yeah. I, I wouldn't be able to, to say exactly which angle this is because each knife is different as well. Uh, maybe it's 12 and a half, maybe it's even less. It doesn't really matter, um, but this is a good test to find the angle and once you're not able to grab the edge anymore with your nail, you know your edge is straight on the stone and that's your angle you want to keep. Got some good advice, dropping gems. Do it again on this side. Now I cannot touch the edge. If you look at the angle, it's pretty high. Mm -hmm. Definitely higher than any uh, double bevel blade I'd sharpen, but this is the Koba and the Koba is always higher than most. Definitely higher than any uh, double bevel blade I'd sharpen, but this is the Koba and the Koba is always higher than most. Clear. There it is. Really light strokes just to feel the geometry a little bit. 
See if your angle's right. You can always use a marker. Uh, color in your coba and then you'll see exactly where you remove metal and if you missed any part. But I always like to do the first strokes slowly with low pressure just to get a feel of if I'm at the right spot, if I'm at the right angle. No burr has been developed yet. Just want to have a clean, straight and crisp coba on this one. Yeah, so we'll go again. I just always check the angle, with, yeah. with, especially with knives I've never sharpened before. Um, you just want to be as consistent as possible. Up and down, once again. And now hopefully the light will show. I'm still only touching like, well, half a millimeter of the blade, which is consistent enough. There's no thick parts. If you have a really inconsistent geometry uh, or you have a loose wrist or anything, you might get thicker parts here and there. And that's when you know uh, uh, you're not consistent with your angle. But this looks nice and consistent, almost a half a millimeter average across the blade. Still no burr, so I'll have to continue sharpening a little bit. For edge sharpening like this, and especially the coba, your angle is quite high, so having a harder stone really helps to prevent digging into the stone. Also, if you're not consistent, your knife easily goes into the stone, which is something you want to avoid, obviously. And hard stone really helps with that. Now I have a burr. So I can feel a burr all along the the edge. Also, my burr is consistent. Uh, over here is not thicker than over here or at the heel. If it's really thick up here, you're maybe putting too much pressure or you're slightly changing your angle. If you go higher, you'll for, you form a burr more easily. So you want to be consistent as possible. So that's why checking is important, especially if you're doing this for the first time. Yeah, just check. Just do like the whole edge and then check again, check again. So you get a decent feel for it. Got a burr. Looks great, doesn't need any more sharpening at this point. You can also check if you're, if you're in doubt, if you have a burr or not, you can put the knife on your nail. And if you cannot move your nail, really light pressure, if you cannot move your nail, you'll have a burr. Like that only happens when you have an apex. So when the two sides meet each other and the, the apex is nice and formed or crisp, then you won't be able to move your nail across the edge. So we'll move to the next stone, which will be to zero 3000. Atoma, do flatten your stones. Yes, Atoma 140 with handle. The handle is not necessary, but it's nice to uh, get an even pressure out of your stones. If you don't have one without a handle, it's actually a little bit more efficient because you can put a 400 grit or 600 grit replacement on the backside. So you'll have, yeah, yeah, you'll have two stones. And I like to use a 400 or 600 grit diamond plate on the finer stones. So like anything up above 5K, 4K, I'll use a uh, less aggressive flattening stone just to make the surface area not so uh, porous or, or, or rough. Flattening your stone, very important with uh, single bevel. Uh, because we're going to do the backside later. It helps you to get consistent with double bevel edge sharpening. 
it's less important, but obviously you don't want to have a really dished out stone. Of course, if you're not sure if your stone is flat, you can use a pencil to just to draw a grid on your stone. And once all the pencil stripes are removed, yeah, so you'll know right. your stone is flat. I always like to chamfer off the edges as well. Just in case you want to chip the stone as well. Yeah, exactly. And also, like if you have, if you're working on a rough stone, 400 grit or lower, and you have a really sharp corner here, it will dig into your finger easily. And those are nasty, uh, nasty cuts. Make sure to dry the knife or at least wash the knife before you move to the next stone. Preferably, you don't want any thousand grit particles on your 3000 grit. Especially if you're doing like a finish, kireya sharpening, you don't want any mix up of particles. And now we just repeat the process. So, um, different stone, same technique, find the angle again and just polish out the thousand grit scratches from your previous session. High pressure, no need to no need to press really hard. Now it's more difficult to check your process or progression because it's harder to see scratches and where you've been and also because you had a burr already. Yeah. So there won't be any checking if if there's a burr again. That's I think why people are also tempted to remove burrs on a thousand stone with a single bevel. I but I wouldn't again. yeah I wouldn't I wouldn't do that. You just have to be consistent. You have to check your edge. With wider edges, it's easier to see if there's still thousand scratches on your on your bevel. And now, because it's such a small surface area, it's harder. And you just have to make sure that you remove all those scratches. Again, with a three thousand stone, you're not removing as much metal with, as a thousand stone. So you can go over the knife a couple more times just to be safe and just so that you remove the uh, scratches of the thousand. Keep checking your burr because it might get a little bit thicker. If it gets really thick really quickly, then um, your angle might be off. Make sure I touch the whole blade. Burr still there, still consistent. No scratches behind the area we're uh, sharpening. So consistent, yeah, I'd say ready to go to the next stone. We can do either a natural stone now, or you could do 5,000 and then go over a slightly finer natural stone. Mm -hmm. uh, up to you. I kind of like a little bit of a bite to the edge. If it's not necessary to go really high up, then I don't mind if we don't. Yeah, yeah, cool. Let's see which will be a good one. This one, definitely one of our most used uh, stones. It's a stone from Morihei, a little shop in uh, Kapabashi in Tokyo. This is a Ohira. Very easy to use, a uh, little bit on the hard side. I use it mostly for edge sharpening, so a lot of high-end carbon steel knives I finish on this one. It gives a really nice refined but still toothy edge. Decent amount of self-slurry, you'll see, yeah. I haven't dived into the whole natural stone world yet, and hopefully I'm not going to. <laughs> <laughs> Big rabbit hole for sure. Yeah. I bought a couple and um, testing, yeah. Natural stones can give like high expectations, but overall they're more difficult to use. Some hard stones, it's really hard to get a nice and consistent finish. If you're doing like wide bevels, mainly for edge sharpening, they're not so they're not so difficult. But yeah, like most people want to polish, polish and, yeah. and, and get that most nice contrast, get the nice cloudy, cladding, shiny core. But yeah, the, 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 the ones that are fine, fast and easy to use are also the most expensive, expensive. ones. Expensive! So, uh, yes! <laughs> yeah. 
I started out with this uh, Binsui, also from Morihei, around 800 to 1000, 1500 grit. Very, very easy to use stone. And it's still affordable. And very affordable. Yeah, it's a nice sized brick for only 85 euros here in the shop. And this is the finer one. We also have a rougher one, which is more like 600 to 1000. But these are special picked by Morihei, so they're slightly on the higher grid scale. Very hard, but if you like use them with, with a lot of slurry, you'll easily get a nice polish on there. But we'll go to this stone uh, for now. Clean water, and we'll just repeat the process. Same thing, polish up the previous scratches from our uh, Trocera 3000. Check the edge. I know this stone is flat, so here we go. And this is a dark stone, so... You'll not see particles as easily as on a light stone. It reacts pretty well to this one. It feels like sometimes it feels very hard on a stainless steel, for instance, on a on a high or a, a, a hard stainless steel. It feels very hard, but then on carbon steel, um, it gets more of a rubbery feeling because you can yeah you can actually feel the stone removing a, a metal on this one. So don't see the slurry that well. No, there's not a lot of it because it's quite hard and doesn't build up slurry that fast. Not really necessary for edge sharpening, but if you want to have like a consistent, nice polish on a, on a wider bevel, then using a Nagura or creating some slurry of the stone itself is definitely recommended. The more slurry, the easier it is to use, but without slurry, it leaves a slightly higher grit finish. You can play with your water levels uh, nicely uh, and with your, uh, the, the amounts of slurry. And with the last stone, I'd just like to make sure that all the uh, scratches are gone. We're not removing, like we're removing really small amounts of metal here, so don't be afraid to sharpen this too long. Just make sure you're consistent. Yeah, just keep checking your bevel. Uh, you don't want to have like a wobbly bevel here. You can see, hopefully the camera picks it up, but like from the from the 3K Chosera, it was quite shiny, and now it's much more of a hazy edge. No problems there. All right. Then it's time for the backside. Again, we only do the backside on our last stone. This will be our last stone, 6,000 grit. Backside, really important always to do it edge forward. So with, with uh, edge sharpening, you, you mostly use uh, uh, pressure on edge trailing strokes. So when the edge is moving away from the stone, also on double bevel, you'll press harder than when the edge is moving into the stone. That's how you avoid cutting into your stone. But with uh, single bevel, you want to do it differently because you want to put pressure when the edge is going towards the stone. Like single bevel always balances towards the back if it's flat and you want to remove the burr here. So that's why you have to keep a little bit more pressure on the front section. If you move forward, the, the blade will level itself out a little bit better. And that's how you'll move the burr properly on this, uh, on this side. Stone is flat, a little bit of water, edge forward. You don't want to put pressure here because sometimes you'll, you'll push the blade over, especially if you're at the tip. You want to keep this as level as possible. I always put a little bit of pressure forward, so I twist my wrist a little bit just to compensate the weight of the blade here, because otherwise you remove more metal here and not enough metal here. You want to remove the burr completely. So I always twist the knife a little bit forward, and my fingers are on the shinogi line, a little bit over the shinogi line, but not here, because then your blade will be uh, weighted on the back side. And then pressure on the forward stroke, and then you come back, light pressure, forward stroke, and then you just move up the blade. Yeah. You can do this slowly because again, it's pretty easy to, you just want to be as consistent as possible. So slow strokes are the way to go. 
Some people tend to make their last stroke, or last stroke uh, uh, lengthwise, which is possible, not necessary, but possible. And then you check your result again. So now we can see mostly there's a there's a little bit of a thick spot here, but overall we have a pretty consistent sharpening line. I can see that we touched the, the, the bevel here and here, which is good. And there's no burr anymore, which is also good. And now the burr might be on the back side again. So we don't have strop a little bit more just to make the uh, burr removal as consistent as possible. So find your angle again and then you can do a stropping motion. Get the whole length of the blade and then any micro burrs that are still left on there will be pushed to the back side again and we'll remove those as well. about it, yeah. Paper test, I always get nervous. <laughs> Sounds good. Yeah, yeah that's great. Doesn't catch anywhere. No. And a nice way of testing it. A little bit better or elaborately, it's just to get a small piece of paper and then see <laughs> if every section of the blade catches the, the paper immediately and doesn't tear up the paper. But this looks um, pretty, pretty good. Pretty flawless. Yeah. yeah. That will definitely cut. Thank you, Anno, for uh, sharing all this knowledge and techniques yeah, and showing very, us uh, very well how to do this. I think I, I could go on. I could go on for a while, but of course, it's it's <laughs> difficult putting all this feeling into words. Whew. Can't wait nice. to use it again, man. Nice knife. Ha, 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 ha.